Hello everyone, so glad you joined us today. We're going to start a special series. Um, a lot of times, as a matter of fact, some of my students wonder about when to draw something, when not to draw it, or just to paint it. Uh, normally, what I usually do on most of my shows is just paint and uh, do it with a brush. I do the sketching with a brush. But sometimes, I want a little more detail in something, then I need to really go back and sketch it either on the canvas or on a piece of paper so I can transfer it to canvas. Come over to the board. I want to show you something here. This is a painting we done some time back, and we done it on live TV, and I'm not sure what else. A lot of this was not on live TV. Some of it may have been, we may have went back and, and added, I don't really recall. But what I done, first of all, I wanted a good straight structure. So I done a, actually a drawing of the barn and then we painted it. And then I wanted to add a few things. I added the old hay rake. I added some rain barrels. I added some barrels probably with apples or tomatoes in them, a wheel bar, a tobacco uh, skiff, and a wagon, I added a wagon, put a little dog and a man carrying two buckets in it. That's a lot of extra work, and each one of those required a sketch because a lot of times you can't just start painting something this small or fine with a brush and get it exactly the way you want it. Anyhow, I want to show you some other things. We're going to do some drawing today, by the way. Come over to the board now. I want to show you a couple of things. One thing is when I'm doing a, a portrait of a barn, actual barn or something, I always want to do a sketch of it to make sure I get it right. Now the upright angles, I'll run this across and you can see that they're pretty well straight up and down. Now, for a tall building, that's not exactly how you see it. Usually, it goes in a little bit at the top, but we won't do that on most of our paintings because it, it don't, the eye don't accept it that way. But if you're doing a photograph, it would be that way. Now, I want to show you a couple other things. Uh, this barn this is the big side, this is the long side, this is the short side. Now if you put a line on here, I want to show you this. Now this is what they call perspective. And you put a line on this. Well, if you go out far enough, if you can see it, they're going to meet out here. That's called a vanishing point. And that's the way you sketch all buildings and people too. If you had another person here, it would be smaller. As a matter of fact, if you notice, the wheelbar is real small. But if he walked up to it, it would be the right size. Or at least the eye would conceive it as being the right size. Now I want to show you another painting. This is one I'm not. I don't think we painted this on ca on camera, but this is the same thing about perspective that I was showing you on the barn. If you notice, it's real wide here, but as it goes back, it gets smaller. That gives you an illusion that the lake is actually running from a smaller area back down to here. And if you walk back here, this would be the small area. And the trees are a little smaller back here, and so is the mountains a little smaller. And we've got a big log laying here and some rocks and stuff. But anyhow, that's the perspective, and I just wanted to show you that on this one. Now I've got one more that I want to show you. And let me get it up here. This is one we done recently, and Jim had a fantastic idea after we painted this. He said, maybe we should add a buggy or something in there, and I thought, that's a great idea. 
So I drew a buggy. First of all, I drew a buggy with wheels on it. And then I got to thinking, well, there's a lot of snow there. It would be sunk down in the snow. So I thought, well, let's put a sleigh in there, and that'll give it a real wintry look. So I, I, I don't know if you can see this or not, but I sketched it, and I'll hold this up here. Maybe you can see it. There. But that's, that's too, a little too small. And I thought, well, rather than re-sketch it, I went to my Photoshop, and I made it a little bigger. Well, I made it too big. See, it'd be too big for the houses. And I'm doing this just by eyeball. This is not, this is not true perspective, but it's eyeball perspective. So I drew it this size, which makes it almost a perfect size for the painting that we're going to do. Anyhow, we're going to paint this, but we're not going to do it on this series. Anyhow, I'm going to set these paintings down. And we're going to come back. Today I've got some paper here, and I wanted to do a little uh, drawing on perspective and how to draw buildings, and I may even show how to draw a person or something on there. Now, first thing you need, of course, is some good pencils, and I usually have three or four or five already sharpened, but I also have this little pad with sandpaper on it that I can go in and sharpen my pencil if I need to. One other thing I would suggest that you have is a kneaded eraser. You can use any kind of eraser, but these just seem to clean up drawing much better. Now I'm gonna come over to the canvas and I'm gonna draw a little barn here and I wanna do a little perspective on it. So let me come way over here and there'll be a lot of different drawings on here and I want to show you some practice steps that I used to take when I was learning how to draw. Now first of all, if I was going to do a little barn, I probably would just roughly sketch it in. Now, this line and this line, this is a tall part, that's a short part. Now I'm coming back this way. And you can make that as long as you want to, or end it anywhere you want to. Same way with the roof on it. That's about the center, so we'll go up there and we'll make a, a roof on it. Now this line also would be on the perspective. In other words, if these two lines met, they would meet out here, you see, roughly. And that would be your vanishing point. And that's how you get all your lines. All your lines would go into that some, somewhere. See, same thing. And so with this one. And I'll go ahead and draw it on there. I hope you can see that. Maybe I should do this with a pen. I don't know. Jim, can you see that okay on camera? on camera. Okay. We'll continue with the pencil line. Now the upright lines, uh, normally, like I say, they would be on the perspective too, but for our drawing we probably will not do that. We'll probably just take a T-square or, or a triangle and just sketch it. Now you can see that we've got a, a pretty good drawing of a barn. That's a, a simple one. Uh, and, and this line probably would be right here. These two lines would be on perspective too, by the way. That one and this one. I need that down a little bit. Let me drop it down. Okay. Then I'll erase that extra line. Now you can see that each one of these will end up at the vanishing point. And that's the vanishing point rough, roughly right there. That's the last thing your eyes can see, which is called a vanishing point. Now we'll do the same thing here.
Now that'll meet, but it'll meet off of the off of the drawing board. So in other words, you're just drawing a box. And that's doing it by eye. Now, well, I'll leave that on there because we may need it a little later. Now, if you wanted to add something else to it, like if you wanted to add a porch to it, the porch, maybe you could see the roof. Maybe, maybe you could see the roof of the porch. So we bring it down this way. I'll just do it by eye here, okay? Now we want to sort of be in line with that and we want it to end up back here. And it probably would end up Somewhere there would be your post, right in that area. And you can add a one back here if you want to, you know, with it. And if you want to take that now, if you just Take your needed eraser and erase it. And your doors are the same thing. They would be on a perspective. If you had a big door here, it would come back to this same way. We'll just put it right. Let's put it here. And then you've got a big opening there, see? Now, that's just to show you how to actually draw a barn. You can do it with a brush, but uh, a lot of times you want a little more detail than sketch it first. Sometimes I sketch on paper and then trace it to the canvas, uh, which is the, the best way to do most things. That way you can place it anywhere you want to on the canvas. Now, I'm going to show you a couple of things that I used to do just, just in training for this. I would just go ahead, for instance, like this. I would just go ahead and draw a box. And I'll try to visualize the, the perspective on it. This line is wrong, so I'd bring it up. Now you've got a box on a perspective there. And I'm doing this freehand, of course. And, and this helps you with, with all your drawings. And everything's made up of, of lines or curves or circles. And uh, Before we started, there was nothing on here. Now you've got a barn here, and you can add other uh, things around it, a wagon or a person. Now, another thing I used to do, and, and this may sound silly or look silly, but when I was learning to draw, I would draw cartoons, of course. That's one of the best things to start drawing. But I would also take lines like this. That's, that's just practice, but it's... The lines are almost straight, you see, and that really helps you with your, with your drawing later on. And then you can go back this way. And then you've got the whole side of the building shadowed, you know. You can rub that together. Now I want to show you uh, uh, a couple more things about drawing. Uh, one thing is when you're doing 
people. Let's get in a spot that you can see real good. Matter of fact, let me just get rid of this. Now we'll come right in this area. Now, I'm just going to start with a, a little person here. And, and I'm, I'm showing you a simple way to draw people. And you do it with the little ovals or circles. And you can make a little arm, or you can do a little circles for arm, a little circle for an elbow, put the arm down, hand. I'll do this in the same way. And then you can go back and put some britches on him. Or dress, whichever the case may be. In this case, we'll put overalls on him. And then you go back and line it up and put some hair on the fella. Ear, nose, eyeballs. Let's put a beard on him, you want to? Now we've got a little person there. And you can go in and any of the lines that you want to get rid of, you can just erase them. Anyhow, you can see you just start with a little oval or circle, another circle. Another little circle for the arms. And this time I'm going to draw a little lady here with, with a long dress on. And you see, we've got a little, little girl. Now, those are just simple drawings uh, of, of people. Uh, a lot of people have trouble with the hand. And I'm gonna, I want to draw you a hand. And I'm just, that's sort of a, a I use a lot of ovals and stuff with my drawings, but <laughs> it makes it a little simpler. Then you can put a, a thumb here. You can put a finger here. Then the middle finger's a little longer. And there, you've got a little simple hand, you know. And you can refine it. Uh, and, and you can do them different ways. Now, actually, I'm I'm just actually drawing a finger here. I'm not not using too much of the uh, ovals, but but it is almost an oval if you can see it.
And you see, we've, we've got a little, a little hand there. And, and you can refine that any way you want to. And anyhow, a hand is, and most people on, when they're doing portraits, they'll charge extra for a hands in a portrait because a hand is usually almost as hard as a face, not quite, but almost. And this is the inside of the hand. And, and I'm Actually, just roughing it in. Similar to that. And then you go back and refine it any way you want to. And as you can see, drawing people is not as difficult as you might think. Uh, and let's draw another person here. You know, we've been doing this for a number of years now, and I, I want to say a special thanks to some very kind people. Mr. Jim Edwards has been so kind to come down and put up with us over the years, and we appreciate that so very, very much. And we appreciate James Fisher doing the uh, editing and everything of our show, and we thank him so much. And... Uh, I don't know how to repay them. They're so kind to us. And they have some great ideas, and I try to listen to everything they say because it means, means a lot to me. It really does, and, and we appreciate it. Anyhow, we're starting to draw a little face here. Uh, I just made a, a, you call it a circle or oval or whatever, and I've got a lot of extra lines here. And you can clean that up or you can just go ahead and start. I come about, about a third of the way. I usually, I can divide it and usually about three, three, three pieces, which is a quick way to do it. Then I put in what, what I would say would be roughly, just roughly the eye. And put in a nose. And bear in mind, then I'll go here and maybe split this in the middle. and make the chin. Now I've got a lot of extra lines I don't need. You can just erase all of those. And when I'm doing portraits, a lot of times I will actually do a complete pencil sketch of the face. I want to make that eye a little bit bigger. Sort of like that, you see. Bring that nose down. Now 
Now I'm going to do a little bit of shattering for you here. This won't be a complete portrait drawing, but it will be an idea of, of, of what, what I do. And I'm going to move that over just a little. Then I'm just sketching a little bit. Then I could put the other eye in here if I wanted to. I want them a little heavier. And I sometimes take the side of the pencil to shadow this side of the face. I hope that this helps someone out there because that's why they do this. Anyhow, then if you want to make a lot of hair, and the ear is usually about even with, with the eye. All right, I, we're about taking up the whole time here. Again, I hope this helps someone out there that is learning how to draw. And it's fun. Sometimes I just sit around and draw things and then just trash them. I, you know what? We've, we've about spent 30 minutes here doing this. So what I'm going to do is say goodbye. But I'll tell you, we'll be back. We may paint something when we come back. So come back and be with us, okay? Goodbye and God bless.